this is Anne from GTFO Plan. Just wanted to do a video on our first ocean crossing. Sorry, Dennis couldn't be here. Uh, we completed our first offshore passage from Suriname, South America to Grenada. I think it was 580 nautical miles, not exactly sure, but we were about 150 nautical miles offshore and it was the most amazing experience ever. Uh, when we tell people we did this, they think we are crazy or daring, but we want to share with you what our experience was truly like in this video. As you know, we're planning our early retirement in June 2023, and by sailing on larger boats, we are building our sailing resume and experience for our future boat. Since we plan to slowly circumnavigate the world when we buy our future boat, having offshore experience is incredibly important, not to mention required by those pesky insurance companies. So we sailed with Bartek and Anya and their nanny Kasha and their two children on their Neil 50 SV Poly. SV Poly 3, it was a trimaran. They're from Poland but speak fantastic English, thankfully, since we don't speak any Polish. Uh, we learned so many things on this trip. It's hard to even capture it all in this video, but I'm gonna give it a try here. We learned how to use radar, probably the most important thing we learned. So you can see storms and other ships. <laughs> That's what it looks like in reality. By using radar, we could see when storms were close by or coming, approaching us from, you know, up to 50 miles away. So we had plenty of time to change course when needed. We actually did that. We changed our course to make sure we would miss a storm and some bad weather. As a sailboat, even a performance-oriented sailboat like the Neil, you can never outrun a storm. So your best bet is to do proper weather routing and avoid storms. It's all about planning. So on the passage, it took us three and a half days. So we did the 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. shift. This is my favorite shift because you get to see the sun rising, which is absolutely incredible. It's so peaceful out in the open ocean. I'm just really surprised to hear how scared people are about being away from land. When you are out in the middle of the ocean, you really get a sense of how small our existence is in this world. And maybe that's what's scary to people. I asked friends and family, what about sailing in the ocean is so scary? It seemed many folks picture the Hollywood version of the movie The Perfect Storm or other similar movies. And they think that we're going to be stuck out, you know, drifting in the ocean with no help, like those women that were stuck out in the Pacific Ocean, or stranded, or sharks will get us. I think it's really just the unknown. Yeah, It's scary to people. And, and, and no doubt, that's definitely scary. It's not that I didn't have reservations, but having actually sailed in the ocean, 150 nautical miles off offshore, it was anything but scary. Uh, the captain was constantly checking weather, we routed based on the weather, and we adjusted based on the radar, and there was nothing scary about the passage. I think the key to remember is, other than sailing to a schedule, you want to let the weather determine what your schedule is going to be. That combined with radar makes sailing so incredibly safe. I think another aspect that scares people is being out in the dark. Maybe that's just me speaking. I do find the pitch black quite scary. One of the most amazing things that we saw was the Milky Way. There's no light pollution. It was incredible. We also saw bioluminescence. When we were sailing at night, you could see the sea all around the back of the boat. You could see this glow-in-the-dark stuff kind of churning up. So when you're out in the open ocean, you do need to be self-reliant and able to fix things. That's why Dennis and I are really focused and constantly adding to our retire early timeline, adding classes such as marine electronics, system basics, marine weather basics. Dennis will also take the piloting and advanced piloting classes to learn more about navigation. We also have something called an EPIRB on our boat, EPIRB, E-P-I-R-B, 
emergency position indicating radio beacon. That's a mouthful. An EPIRB is meant to help rescuers locate you in an emergency situation. And these radios have saved many lives since their creation in the 1970s. But we do need to be pretty savvy in some basic boat fixing skills and first aid skills. And that's why we're taking all the classes. And this is where planning, regardless of what your retirement plan, is so incredibly important. Uh, some of the other concerns that I heard was running out of food and especially water. We plan to have a rain catchment system, which is basically a system that catches the water. And that could be something as basic as a bucket where you have water off your the top of your boat. And the biggest producer of water that will have them, a water maker, basically it's a desalinator and it takes the salt water from the ocean and makes fresh drinking water. And of course, we're gonna provision with lots of extras like rice and flour and canned meats and veggies. So we have a backup to our fresh veggies and fish that we may catch if we ever learn how to fish. So we learned how to rig a jenniker and a spinnaker. A jenniker is a sail that was developed, I don't know, two, almost 30 years ago. It's used when sailing downwind, so that means the wind is coming behind the boat to certain angles. It's a cross between a genoa, which is that sail that's at the front of the boat and comes to the side, and a spinnaker. And a spinnaker is, can be symmetric or asymmetric, but that's typically used. It's like a genoa, but it's not attached to the forestay, the front of the boat, like a jib or a genoa. The jenniker is rigged like a spinnaker, but the tack is fastened down. The tack is that bit in the front attaching it to the front of the boat. You attach that, it has a greater camber than a genoa, but significantly less camber than a spinnaker. What does all that mean? I'm not exactly sure. I highly recommend you check out Sailing Totem, that's T-O-T-E-M, to find out more about sails than I know. I have a great write-up on their website. Speaking of them, we definitely plan to use them as consultants, but get our boat ready for uh, sailing. Uh, we're going to get sail recommendations, class recommendations, all kinds of things, because we can read all we want online, but they have been sailing for a very long time with their family and have incredible experience. Jamie is a sailmaker and has a vast expanse of knowledge. I know several people who have used them as consultants. So we're not taking any of this lightly with sailing the ocean. So don't worry, mom. It's really not that scary. There is also to say the spinnaker was amazing when it was set up, but it required a huge amount of work to get it. I was starting to wonder if the sail, the spinnaker, was worth all the setup. However, once it was finally deployed, it was an amazing way to sail. And some people say when you're doing an Atlantic crossing, for example, from Europe to the US, and they do about 80% of their sailing using the spinnaker, you're probably only gonna spend about 5% of your time if you're sailing around the world doing crossings, maybe 10%. For us, we're gonna spend 90% of our time at anchor by beautiful locations, off islands and different land, and just experiencing different cultures. And it's gonna be incredible. Hey everybody, how are you doing? We just completed our first offshore passage, a bit tired from night watches. Uh, you can see land behind us. I love our GTFO plan. So please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you have, thank you so much for supporting us. And if you click the bell icon, you will get uh, notifications as we add new videos. Thank you.